Uh, I wanted to talk about this question, but I think uh, I'm just gonna have to let that be. Um, it's uh, yeah, and I think most people kind of get that that um, that when you lift by path one versus path two, that the change in gravitational potential energy is the same. The thing that's sometimes remarkable is how you arrive at the same change of energy um, through the work done. Either the apply work done by apply the force, either directly lifting up or um, pushing it this way, because the amount of force required in the two cases are different. Um, but the 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 exact same way in which amount of force is different, the distance is different as well. So this path ends up doing the same amount of work as this path. And if you look at the work done by gravitational force, then um, the component of gravity that does it. So. But I can't do that in five minutes so, or three minutes. So let me actually do this instead. So, uh, so this is a setup that's describing a cart of some mass resting on some level track being pushed with a straight line with some fixed amount of force. And it says it's pushed for this uh, distance. Now, this kind of setup, it's one of those things that's uh, easy to describe in words. And maybe, um, um, uh, well, it's easy to describe in words. Now, if I wanted to do this as an experiment, it can be really challenging. Applying a fixed force of two newtons on a moving object, um, that can be challenging. In a simulation, it's a lot easier. One, I can have a cart or something that's cart equivalent that's ideal. I can just say no friction anywhere. So that if this uh, uh, if this thing starts out with any kind of initial velocity, let me give it some initial velocity, then then you know then it'll go on forever. It won't ever stop because there's no friction. Well, maybe it might stop eventually due to air resistance, but aside from that, it won't stop. Um, and did I does it still have? Okay, let me just zero out the velocities. Um, and uh, what simulation is nice for is uh, I can apply a fixed amount of force in a way that's uh, a lot harder in a physical setup. I have a thruster that can literally apply, well, two newton of force. And let me give it a little toggle key so that I can turn it on and off. Um, so I have, um, let me make the material one kilogram since that's what the question said. Um, and I can, uh, so with the toggle key, I'm going to press T. I can apply a force for a fixed uh, uh, situation. So um, so this is, I guess, the setup I want you to describe. Um, so, and uh, describe now and come back to it in about a week or two or so. So I'm going to just uh, put this down as a marker. Um, on this blue the background, let me clone it. And with, I don't know if a clone the thing is also glued to the background. Um, oh yeah, it's glued. Okay, so I have this set up and I can uh, time this uh, thruster so that I turn the thruster on when it is uh, here. And then as the front of this reaches this end, I can turn the thruster off. Uh, that's uh, basically what this question is describing. You know, kilogram resting, apply force of two newtons, push the for this distance. I didn't measure a meter, but let's say that's a meter. Yeah, might not be, but <laughs> let's say this. So I'm gonna use a. Uh, uh, by the way, I can control this with a space bar, so I'm just gonna do that. Uh, so let me start the simulation and just uh, let this run for this distance under that fixed thrust. So, so that's one. Now, uh, just to make this uh, easy, let me um, do a plot. Uh, show plot. And um, I'm going to plot x velocity of the object. And yeah, let me run this again. So running simulation, thrust to start, and end. OK. Let me take a screenshot of that for comparison purposes. 
And this is what I want to compare this to. So I have, wait. Um, sometimes my, uh, the s screenshot thing that shows up, sometimes it doesn't even show up. Don't know why it doesn't. So I'm opening up a different image software to paste to this uh, clipboard information into uh, whenever it finishes running. Right, that's there. Um, and uh, let me just change the setup a little bit. I'm going to make the mass uh, instead of one kilogram. Let me make it two kilograms. Uh, I'm just gonna undo, uh, go back to here. Oh, I think I can actually compare it here as well. So let me make the mass two kilograms. And let's do the same thing. I'm gonna keep everything else the same. I'm going to turn the thruster on here, and then I'm going to turn it off when the front gets it here. Oh, I didn't time it right. All right. So this is the setup we have. And let me just copy this over. I guess I didn't really need to. Um, yeah, uh, you know what, this one plot actually has everything. So you see that with the, those two masses of different, uh, two blocks of different masses, you see that they, the final speed they reached is different. And these are the, there are the kind of questions that you could ask. Um, so, you know, at the beginning, they had the same energy, zero kinetic energy. At the final in ending velocity, they have some kinetic energy. So people could ask the question of, do they, uh, how do their kinetic energies here compare? And, um, and the answer, I guess, to spoil it, is that they, they have the same kinetic energy. And I can say that confidently, even though they have such a different velocities, um, and, and, you know, you can, if you want at home, you can do the math yourself. You see that one had a mass of one kilogram. So this had a mass of one kilogram and it had a final velocity of about 4.4 .4 meters per second. And the other one had a mass of two kilogram and final velocity of, uh, 3.1 meter per second. And if you do the calculation of kinetic energy, one half m times v squared, uh, these two should end up pretty close. And I can say that without doing the calculation myself, because um, the way this situation is set up, the way I apply the force on those two blocks, it's designed to do same amount of work from here to here. And I'm saying that even though, or maybe because <laughs> the amount of time I'm applying the force over is different. And this is the, um, one of the ways uh, people can ask a tricky mechanical questions. And, um, it gets even trickier when we have two different quantities of motion. Uh, this week we have kinetic energy. Next week we'll introduce momentum and, uh, and uh, so let me bring this setup next week to maybe introduce some sources of confusion and um, we'll have a more chance to talk through in detail. But I want you to introduce this now because we are talking about work and energy now. And when I was looking at this question, I thought, hey, I can actually extend this with the momentum and make it confusing. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll address the confusing part next week or the week after.